Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. I thought I'd do a live stream. It's been a while since I've done one. And I just thought I would come along and try to talk to you guys, answer a few questions. I've had a few people ask me some questions about cluster flies recently because it's that time of year again. Um, cluster flies like to come in in the fall of the year. They are uh, one of the things that do like to invade the home. They, they're not garbage flies. You know, a lot of people think of flies as, you know, a nasty, something's going to make you sick, crawl in your food. They are uh, just right out real, you know, pretty disgusting things. Uh, cluster flies are not in the same way. They actually don't really breed in garbage. They don't breed in uh, rotting things. They are uh, more likely to cause you problems in your uh, home in the fall when it starts to get cold. The cluster fly maggot, they are a parasite to earthworms, so they're not really uh, going to come in the house. Um, what areas do you treat for cluster flies? Oh, I, I go all over Virginia. I'm, uh, you know, as far as cluster flies locally, um, Bedford, Lynchburg, Charlottesville, uh, all along 460, um, you know, basically just, you know, from around about 30, 40 mile radius, I guess, from Lynchburg, maybe a little bit further than that. Uh, I go all over the state for bed bugs, but as far as cluster flies, I just do, you know, mostly local work. Um, I have had people call me long distance, like for, uh, you know, cockroaches and flies and things like that. And because uh, I'm listed all over the state, that uh, it's really something that's probably not going to be uh, in their best interest you know, to hire me, they could probably find somebody local that would charge them a lot less. You know, if I've got to go long distance, I've got to charge mileage and everything like that too. And it can get pretty expensive. And just for flies, you know, most people are, especially cluster flies, because they don't spread disease. They're not something that, you know, is going to make you sick when they realize that they're not, you know, garbage flies. Most people, they get thousands of these things in their house and they're thinking they've got some kind of dead animal in the wall or, something crawled up under the house or something like that and they're really concerned and after they talk to me and they realize well they're not really something that's going to spread disease then they're more likely to you know go out and get something and maybe try it themselves or call somebody local so it's not that big a deal uh just so you know i'm that was david i was just answering his question <laughs> if you want to ask i'm here i can hear the chat and everything i can read it so if you have any questions at all, don't don't hesitate to ask if you, you know, about anything. It doesn't have to be about flies. It could be about any bugs at all. But um, anyway, these are pictures right here that I took tonight. My wife actually took them with her camera. I caught one in the house. I live right next to a cow pasture. So the, the ground is really fertile out here. And in the spring, when we get a lot of rain, the earthworms breed out of control. And we get a lot of moles because moles eat earthworms too. So we get a lot of moles in the summer and the cluster flies will breed all year long. So they, uh, when it's time for them to get hot, you know, I mean, when they want to get warm through the winter, they start uh, invading the home in the, in the winter time. If you go into a client's apartment, what areas do you focus on for treatment, windows, doors, etc.? Oh, well, you mean for flies? Well, for flies, uh, you know, once they get in the home, now the way you do a cluster fly treatment is the exterior wall, typically what they'll do is they will swarm, um, they swarm to the wall of the home. And I'm sorry, you guys, my chat for some reason behind me where it's black, usually the chat shows up there. I don't know why it's not working tonight. I, I tried for about a half an hour, could not get it to work. So I'm just reading the questions as they come in. Usually, you know, you can see the questions pop up. But uh, anyway, what I normally do to get rid of cluster flies is when you go out in the afternoon and it's nice and warm, it's usually about 60 degrees. It's still warm enough now to get them. Uh, they'll swarm the wall 
and you have to broadcast treat the wall. Now you have to have a chemical that's labeled for that, but you broadcast treat the wall where they're where they're landing, and when they crawl through that surface, it'll kill them. Now on the internal, the inside of the house, you want to treat like around your windows and your doors, uh, you know, in the cracks and crevices, because what happens is the flies will go to the windows and they'll bounce around in the windows because they are attracted to light and they'll crawl in the chemical and it'll kill them. And so a lot of times you'll find little piles of dead flies in the windows and in the floor after pest control, uh, especially, you know, two, three weeks, you know, right after you've treated when the chemicals at its strongest, that's when you're going to get them, you know, piling up in heaps in your windows and your doors. They make it a little further, you know, after they, of course, they're going to go to the windows anyway because they like the light and they'll make it further into the uh, house later on and they'll fly around. You'll find them dead in the floor, especially if you go away for like the weekend, you'll come back and find a whole bunch of them dead. So if that was answered your question. Um, but anyway, uh, now I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the flies, the, the best way to treat them, like I said, is the exterior wall of the house. You want to, uh, you want to really pay attention to whatever gets the most afternoon sun. Uh, typically your, let me think how it would be your South West, I think is the side. Let me see. I'm trying to think of my house and what sides get it the worst. I'm pretty sure it's the southwest. It's either southwest or northwest. It's going to be your western sun because as the sun goes down, that's the side that's going to get the warmest. That's the side you're going to get, you know, the worst problem in. And I'll tell you, too, they love to get in your attics. You can get little foggers and bombs to set off in your attic that will kill them in the attic because what will happen in the wintertime is the the cluster flies will warm up when the sun shines on the roof and it'll warm your attic space and they will come down into the house around your light fixtures, around your outlet covers, and they'll come out, you know, wherever there's a hole in the wall, they'll fly out into the house. And of course, like I said, then they're in the house in the wintertime when it's warm because it's warm in the house. It's not, you know, they, they don't sleep. They don't hibernate in your home when it's warm. You know, they're just looking for a place to winter over. You know, out in the woods, they'll go up in a tree or a hole or something like that, and they'll they'll hibernate and they'll slow way up. But when they come in your house, it's warm in the house, and so they can easily survive in your home, uh, you know, all winter long. And I've gone into apartments and see bunches and bunches of dead flies on windowsills and edges of the carpet. I'm using aerosol called Alpine Flybait. I'm in Texas. Oh, Alpine is good stuff, man. If it's if it's an Alpine, I've been really I've, I'll look that up real quick. Let me see here if I can bring up a window here. Um, let's see. I'm not on my good computer. I'm on my desktop, tonight, my laptop. My desktop's a good one, but. The place I've got my desktop, it's cold, and I don't want to sit out there. <laughs> uh, Alpine Fly Bait you're using? I've never used that. I use a lot of the Alpine products for bed bugs and stuff like that. I've never actually used the Fly Bait. I don't look into that and see what that is. Let's see here. If I can pull up the label, I'd like to see what's in it. There we go. Oh yeah, that's the same thing. Yep, that's that's Alpine for you. I am not Dino Tiferan. Do the best I can. <laughs> but um yeah, that's the same active ingredient that's in all the Alpine pesticides. It's uh, it's amazing. It's really good on bed bugs. Really good on cockroaches. Um, they make a alpine dust that's really good for you know cockroaches and things. Most of it's diatomaceous earth, but it does have the uh, active ingredient in it from alpine. But it's it's really good stuff. It's it's not as good like when you're killing bed bugs or something like that. Crossfire is better, but alpine still works. It does work really well. I only think that crossfire works so well because you can treat everything with it. You know, it's it's got such a broad label. They allow you 
you know, it's got a lot of lot of wiggle room. So, but yeah, it says here that it's uh, how do you use this? Like I said, I've never used this before. If it's it's doing a good job for you, I would you know I'd keep on with it, especially if you're coming in and you're finding dead flies everywhere. But. Like I said, I've, I've always just used the, you know, general pest control, always, typically all the products I use are labeled for flies anyway, cl especially cluster flies. So, yeah, I'll look into that. Yeah, thank you too. I appreciate that. I like sharing knowledge if you got it. I'm always up to being a better exterminator. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm sure you guys down in Texas with all of your uh, cattle and everything down there. I mean, that's the rib state, isn't it? Rib capital of the world. So, I've been to Texas once. I went to Houston. That was a great place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there, but it's all right to, to visit. I like the mountains of Virginia myself. <laughs> so... Anyway, I've got these pictures of these flies. Now, this is up close in the, in personal in the in the front of the fly, and uh, this is his backside. Now, I'll show you the difference here. Let's see if I can get this to pop up. There we go. The uh, you'll notice the back of the fly is black. A um, a cluster fly is not. Now, if you'll ever notice a garbage fly, they have a really shiny, almost metallic green color. I was telling my wife, you know, we don't have anything rotten in the house, so I don't have any garbage flies flying around. I'd love to get a picture of one of those. I actually think they're, as far as insects go, the color of a garbage fly, it's a really pretty green, but uh, I don't like to see them because they're nasty, breeding in garbage and rotten animals and things. And so this is one way you can tell the difference between a garbage fly and a cluster fly is cluster flies are black color like this one. They're pretty hairy. Uh... You know, if you look at it, see it's got all the little hairs and stuff all over their body. That's definitely a cluster fly. Not only that, but I caught this fly in a glass with my bare hand. They're really sluggish, really slow. Good luck trying to catch a garbage fly that way. They're really fast and they're agile and they can get away from you. But cluster flies, they're really just looking for a place to sleep during the winter. So they're already kind of drowsy and they're really easy to catch. And so I caught him in a glass that big around just a little like a little uh juice glass that my daughter uses to drink blue juice out of don't worry i washed it but <laughs> but yeah i caught it off the ceiling I, I just reached up grabbed it off the ceiling and pulled it down and put it on the table took a picture of it so it was uh you know they're real easy to catch they're not like normal flies you know what, what i say is normal fly like a like i said like garbage flies where they they'll get away from you you go to smack them and they're already gone so they're, uh, they're a lot harder to catch. But like I said, if I could catch one of those, I'd like to get a picture of one of those. But this is the best I could get for right now. <laughs> so, well, I am not. I don't think I'm really going to be streaming for very long tonight. I don't have a whole lot of people here. David's pretty questioning. He's got a lot of questions. But uh, I just thought I'd run a live stream real quick. I haven't done one in, in quite some time. I've gotten... Uh, a few subscribers here lately and i've been asked to do some shows I've, I've got uh i've got some some things in the works a uh i'm gonna do a how to treat your couch for bed bugs i've, I've uh i've got a sectional it's a pretty large couch and uh, i'm just gonna i mean i don't have bed bugs but i was just gonna show you what you do to, to treat them yourself because I've got a lot of people that are really interested. They want to know how to take care of bed bugs. For some reason, that's just the only thing I get a lot of questions for here on this channel are bed bugs. So, uh, I, when I first started it, I know the first couple videos I made were about bed bugs, but it's really kind of blown up because there's such a problem all across the country. So, I do have a few videos in the work. I know lately on Mondays, I've been uh, talking a lot about mice and how to control mice. And uh, once that gets done and over, then I'm going to go into some more bed bug videos and maybe do some instructional videos, try to help some people take care of the bed bug problems. I know that the heat treatments are running rampant across the nation. Everybody wants to do a heat treatment, but if you can't afford a heat treatment, and most people can't, uh, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a better insight on how to be able to do it yourself and save some money. So if it'll work for you, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, you're not out that much money. You can always call an exterminator to come in and do it for you. But uh, 
So if there are any more questions, I'll give you all a few more minutes. I'll ramble on a little longer about these flies. And if, uh, you know, if there's any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here in the next about maybe 10 minutes or so. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I know that. I know that's right. Bed bugs are a nightmare. I'm trying to save up to get the house treated. Yeah, they are. I, uh, currently working for a pest control company, learning, appreciate your videos, company didn't provide much training. You know, that's, I've run into that a lot about the training. Um, I don't know if it was you I was talking to today or not, but I know I was talking to somebody about a, a woman that used to have me as her, uh, I used to be her pest control guy. And I think it was Echo Wolf I was talking to on one of my videos. But uh, the woman had worked for a company, a pest control company, and I was her exterminator. And, I mean, she hired me, even though she knew how to do pest control. But she was driving around in her own vehicle. It was a car, and uh, Bellows Duster rolled up underneath the seat of her uh, car. And every time she would sit down, it would puff the smoke uh, of dust in there and she was breathing it in. She didn't even know what she was breathing in and she made herself sick as a dog. She all, she went to the hospital. She ended up in, uh, uh, in intensive care and, uh, from, I think it was probably tracking powder. That's just, I mean, from the symptoms she was telling me what she was, uh, going through, I think it was tracking powder, but she just didn't have the training. You know, you, you got to be real careful around pesticides. You need to know what you're doing because you can hurt yourself if you're not careful. But, you know, they had her in an actual car where the chemicals were rolling around. And what had happened is it just rolled up underneath the seat from the back seat. And she was sitting on it puffing dust all every time she sat in, every time she sat down. It would just puff out every time. So, poor woman, I felt sorry for her. But she hired me. She says she didn't feel uh, confident enough if she's going to poison herself to do pest control herself. So she, <laughs> excuse me, but, but yeah, I've, I've got the books and everything. I just got one today. I'm going to be working on here. I'm, I'm not really licensed to do wildlife. I've, uh, I know how to, but working on my license to do that and I'll be offering trapping and stuff too. That's going to be entertaining skunks and wonderful things like that but but yeah echo wolf it's not that bad really to uh to take care of the uh the bed bugs it, you can do it yourself for probably less than three hundred dollars really if you um you know as far as invested in chemical and the equipment and everything but it, uh, a lot of people would rather you know yeah it's it's easy to find out how to do it yourself looking it up online and everything but when it comes to bed bugs, a lot of people would rather just have the security of hiring a guy, you know, coming in and treating beds and stuff like that. You don't want to accidentally make yourself sick. So that's what one lady told me before. But, oh, man, that diatomaceous earth is awful. Oh, it's so awful. It's so awful. I'm in that stuff all the time. It's the number one thing that I find that people use is diatomaceous earth. When they find bed bugs, they go and they buy that stuff. And it's cheap, you know, twelve dollars a bag or something like that. And they, oh, it is, it's murder. It really is. I hate it. <clears throat> I just get all choked up thinking about it. I uh, always wear a dust mask and everything when I go into a bed bug job because I'm always worried I'm gonna. I mean, the stuff's everywhere. You lift up a mattress and it's just caked on and it's just puffing out. I, I get covered in it. So, yeah, I don't like it. You can eat it though. Apparently, you get food grade and eat it, but. I don't want to breathe it. It's not fun to breathe at all. Man. Well, any questions you got, David, I'm I'm more than happy to, to help you out. I've been doing this my whole life. The first job I ever did, I was seven, six or seven years old, and uh, it was a snake job. Actually, it wasn't snakes. It was mice. But the woman was scared that snakes were going to come in, so I threw mothballs in her attic. I was just a little boy, and the the square, it was a little square hole about that big. And I was the only one that could fit in it. And my dad just said, oh, Jason, you'd be all right. And he just pushed me right up under there. And I had to walk around in the attic. And he's like, just be careful. Don't step where there aren't any boards. You'll fall through the ceiling. That was 
you know, for seven, that's pretty stressful, worried about, you know, damaging a woman's ceiling. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, Eco, uh, that's about, I mean, that's, I don't know. That's uh, how many times he's. I guess for fourteen hundred, he was just gonna do it the one time, or is he gonna do it more than once? I'm cheap. I don't charge a whole lot to do bed bugs. I probably could charge more, but you know I make a living, and so I I try to be pretty fair to people. I don't try to overcharge people. I know that money's hard to come by, but yeah, it's not bad. It's all right. It's hard. The worst thing about starting your own pest control company, David, is, uh, and he's asking, he's telling me now he's going thinking about maybe starting his own company one day, but the worst thing about it is the liability. You really have to know what you're doing. You don't want to make someone's pet sick or you don't want to make someone's kid sick or something like that. Just be careful what you use. A lot of the chemicals have changed, you know. I mean, I've, I've been, I'm actually, I've done a Chlordane uh, years ago when I was just a kid, mainly because I was the only one that fit under the house. I was a little kid. I used to actually go through a cinder block hole when I was really little. I used to fit through the little vent holes on the side of a house. And, uh... That's how I would treat a house with termites because I could fit in real tight places. I could contort and fit through the holes and stuff. And so I went into some real tight crawl spaces and treated with chloridane. But the you know, last year you could use chloridane was 89. So I wasn't, you know, I was born in 81. So I was like, you know, seven, six or seven years old, maybe eight, when I did my first uh, termite job and I was using chloridane. But back, back then, you know, the, the chemicals would build up in your system. You know, the chlorinated hydrocarbons like chloridane, lindane. They still use lindane today for head lice. But, um, but yeah, the, those would build up in your system, and you could make yourself pretty sick if you weren't careful, if you didn't wear the proper, you know, rubber gloves and, you know, coveralls and, you know, all the things you need. Glasses, you know, you have to wear the safety goggles and stuff like that because if you, you know, you don't want to make yourself sick. So... But now that they've got things uh, more like neonicotinoids and stuff like that, they're a lot safer for mammals and they don't they don't hurt you hardly at all. In fact, they're so non-toxic, you don't even have to wear gloves when you mix them, most of them. So, you know, that's a pretty good, you know, chemicals have come a long way. A lot of people are worried about, you know, pesticides and chemicals and they're trying to be more health conscious. But, you know, the pesticide industry has come a really long way in 30 years and you know, it's nowhere near as dangerous as it used to be, you know, making yourself sick or making others sick. And even back then when, you know, there was a, a higher chance, very few people really had problems with pesticides, you know, even with DDT and things like that, you know, really hardly any people got sick. So, yeah, temperate, uh, for, yeah, temperate is, is, uh, Nygaard, Nygaard is an IGR though. You're not using Nygaard for bed bugs. Most bed bugs are immune to IGRs. That's just a waste. I mean, that's what I've read. I've never used any on them. Is Crossfire cheaper than Lights Out? I didn't know that. Crossfire is like $50 for 13 ounces if you get it off of Amazon. Somewhere like that, you can find it. But, um... I use Crossfire. I like Crossfire. It's amazing. It, I could not believe it. I um, I got desperate because the pesticides I was using quit working. I mean, they were working, but they weren't working like they used to. And so I switched and started using Crossfire, and I was kind of leery because a lot of people will claim things work, and then you use it, and they don't. And so I tried it, and... Everywhere I've used it, I mean, everywhere is it's almost a hundred percent knockdown with just one treatment. I couldn't believe it. And with liquid application, you typically expect to have to come back two to three times. And you know, I'm I'm doing one. I had a guy I did up in Northern Virginia who called, and he had uh, he actually had three days later he found a live bed bug and that's the last one he saw and up to four months later still has not seen a single bed bug since now i've treated it two more times though just to be on the safe side but that stuff's amazing wow 
what is a active ingredient in Lights Out? I wonder why how they can get around with charging you so much for something like that. I'd like to know what that is. Um, let's see. I'm going to use this window right here. Lights Out. Let's see here. It is non-toxic to all mammals, does not harm the environment, kills with residual action for up to 30 days after application. Also kills cockroaches, ants, millipedes, carpet beetles, and fleas. Kills listed insects with 5-10 minutes after application. That sounds pretty nice. Now what's the active ingredient? Water-based liquid odor, cinnamon. Tan. Don't tell me it's just cinnamon. It's soybean oil and cinnamon. Yeah. There was a... Uh, i tell you what happened. I have a friend of mine who was uh, in Florida. And, let's see, lots of spray and bait. Eco, what state do you reside? 1400 is expensive. Yeah, it is. Well, I charge, now what I charge, I usually charge locally, uh, it's less than $1,000 is what I charge locally. And then um, it goes up based on mileage. So if I have to travel out of state, I mean not out of state because I can't go out of state, but if I go out of my like within... 40, 50 miles. If I have to go further than that, I have to charge extra for my mileage because it gets kind of expensive for the company. And so uh, I charge mileage after that. And I'm still cheaper than anybody around, but I'm going three times. I get uh, everything up front. And then I, get, I do, the way I've been doing it lately is I offer a, um, I've been offering promotion and I give two additional treatments for free. And I just, I get the first charge and then I go two more times for free because I've been kind of switching my chemicals around and I want to make sure what I'm doing is working. And so I've just been given the two extra treatments for free and I charge the mileage and all. And so I'm still cheaper by thousands cheaper than, than local. They were charging up in DC at, uh, in, let me see, this was, it was, where was that? Uh, Falls Church. They were charging $950 per bedroom uh, one guy had a two-bedroom apartment, and they were going to charge him about twenty-eight hundred dollars to do his apartment. And uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. And just one time, no guarantee. If they have to come back, they would have charged him the same thing to treat again. And that's just that's really expensive, you know. But that's up around D.C. Cost of living's higher up there, but still, twenty-eight hundred dollars for one treatment, and it's an apartment when you've got neighbors next door and you don't know if they've got them or not, that's, that's really expensive. So actually I treated his apartment and, uh, come to find out after we got rid of his bed bugs, it was a couple months later and I called him and he's like, Oh yeah, I found one in my bathroom and his bathroom goes back to back with the apartment next door and he was talking to him and he said, oh yeah, they've got bed bugs too. So what's happening is even though we eliminated them in his apartment, they're coming through the walls because it's an older building and the bed bugs are traveling actually through the wall into his apartment. So even though he's treated and killed them, they're still traveling over to from the neighbor's apartment. So that's kind of frustrating, you know, when the the biggest problem and they they actually wrote a, a really good paper on the virginia department of agriculture's website about bed bugs is that um they are treated as a single unit problem but the real issue is it's not a single unit problem it's a whole building problem because they travel between the walls you know they now, the newer buildings, they're not as bad because with fire, you know, the fire, uh, what is it, the, the fire codes and things and how thick the walls have to be and different things, it, it's, it's not as likely for them to travel. They still can through wiring and things like that, but they're not as bad. But in older buildings, 
that, you know, it's just an insulated wall between the apartments. It's not a problem at all for bed bugs to travel between walls through outlet covers and, and uh, under baseboards and things like that. So that's actually what's happening to him in his particular instance. It's kind of frustrating. But I, I would I don't think I would spray a PlayStation 3. That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Mm. Well, you know, one of the biggest problems with neighboring apartments is people don't like to admit they have bed bugs. The landlords have gotten to the point, and, and not just landlords, but just property managers as a whole, are, are most of them that I run into are just jerks. And they want to try to blame the tenant. And so you find that a lot of tenants aren't willing to admit that they have a problem at all because they don't want to get evicted. They don't want to get kicked out. It's their home. They're trying to live there. They're paying to live there. And then the property management comes in and says, well, you brought bed bugs in the property. We're kicking you out. And it's really frustrating to, you know, not just them, you know, trying to live there, but to me as a, as an exterminator, you know, they could be paying me to come in and get rid of their problem. And then the property manager decides to come in and kick them out, you know, because they're treating it as a, uh, they're not, bed bugs are contagious. The way I explain to people, they're contagious like chicken pox. And if you go to visit someone in their home and, you know, you've never had chicken pox and they've got them, you're going to catch them. And if you sit down on their couch and have a cup of coffee, they'll crawl in your pockets and you'll take them home. It's, e I think, honestly... I'm at the point right now where I feel that the bed bugs are easier to transport than roaches. And roaches are pretty easy to transport. But if you go in someone's house and you sit on a chair and a bed bug crawls in your pocket, I mean, those things, they're little bitty things. They'll come right home with you. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having issues with property management. You know, trying to talk to property management and explain to them, you know, look, it's not their problem. They're coming from a unit next door. Why don't you tell them? Why don't you let me come in and look? Why don't you, you know, I could come in. I could do a free inspection. I don't even charge to look. You know, it doesn't charge anything to look and just see what's going on. And then we can at least rule this out as a problem. But they, they, of course, actually, the one building in particular I'm thinking about, the, uh, the guys got them. And the man, property management, of course, I, I got rid of them, but they're coming in next door and I approached them and they're like, oh, no, we don't. We've never had a problem in this place with bed bugs ever, which, of course, is a lie. I mean, when the neighbors are saying they've got bed bugs and they're telling each other they've got bed bugs, but they're not going to tell the property management they got bed bugs because they get kicked out. So, but yeah, they are. They're an epidemic. They're really bad. I mean, when I first started this, when I was a kid, I didn't know what bed bugs were. You know, your mother tells you, you sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, and you think it's something like the boogeyman. But nowadays, it's, you know, you think bed bugs, you're thinking you've got them. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all over the place. Just a few years ago, just five years, five years ago, I got about maybe one or two calls a year on bed bugs. And now I'm getting like, 10, 15 calls a week. And now not all of them are local because, you know, people from on YouTube call me. They call me and I talk to them. Uh, but I'm getting calls in all the time. I'm doing at least two or three. And I'm just, it's just me. You know, I'm not a big company. I'm a very small company. Just me working for myself. And I can hardly keep up with the bed bug work because, I mean, they're calling me all the time. So... Is it true that it's best to put your uniforms in the dryer as soon as you get home to kill whatever might be on them? Fleas, bed bugs, or etc. Yes. Yes. It's a good idea. I throw them in the wash. I just throw them in the wash. It's a good idea to throw a uniform in the wash when you get home anyway because you're going to have chemicals and stuff on them anyway, and it's just good practice to, to wash your uniform. Um, I don't know how your, how your company is, but, you know, I, I always have, you know, three or four uniforms so I can... Uh, you know, always have a clean one. I go in someone's house and they don't want to smell my stinky body if I ha haven't cleaned my uniform. 
So I always make sure I keep my uniforms clean. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my wife. She's over there sitting watching me. I've come home and I've changed my uniform in the middle of the day just because I didn't want to risk taking bed bugs to another customer's house. Because you, you don't want to take them to someone else's house. You know, I just did a video about vacuuming uh, bed bugs and that's a horrible idea. I, I've never understood why. Well, I know why companies want to do vacuuming. It, it looks nice and it makes sense when you think about it. But if you really think hard and use common sense, it's not a good idea to take a vacuum that's infested with bed bugs into someone's house who's never had them. Uh, you know, you vacuum. Typically, the, the, the three things people vacuum as exterminators are bed bugs, roaches, and fleas. And all three of those are highly contagious, I guess you could say, and you don't want to spread them around. You don't want to take roaches into a flea account. You don't want to take fleas into a roach account. You definitely don't want fleas and bed bugs in the same account because it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to get eaten alive all day long. You know, so it, the vacuuming is, is just not a very good use of, uh, I, I think it's a waste. I just don't think it's it's a very good idea. It looks good to the con consumer because they're like, oh, wow, he's really worked hard. Look at him. He's running around with a vacuum cleaner, cleaning up all my bugs. But they don't think that that vacuum cleaner came from somewhere that had bugs. You know, my, my wife, she said the first thing she thought of when she thinks of somebody coming in and vacuuming up her bugs is where has that vacuum been? I don't want that thing in my house. I don't know what you've been sucking up in that thing. Keep that away from me. So she she's different. <laughs> well, the thing about fleas, they've changed a lot of the chemicals for fleas. The hardest thing to get the, with fleas are, all right, it takes 21 days for fleas, now that's they, some 16, but typically the longest they can take are 21 days to hatch. And now, now when I say hatch, they go through metamorphosis. So they come out of a cocoon, and as soon as they're ready to bite you, they jump out of the cocoon, they jump on you, they bite you, and they lay their eggs in the blood. So they can lay dormant in their cocoon stage past the 21 day mark. And so I always tell my customers, that if you're wanting to get rid of your fleas before the month is up, then you need to go through and vacuum your carpets after I've treated. You need to make sure you vacuum all the carpets really well, once a day, twice a day, as often as you want. But, you know, at least once or twice, well, at least four or five times a week, you, you want to vacuum your carpets. And, you know, once a day is perfect. Um, to treat the floors there's lots of different chemicals you can use but it's a broadcast you know a lot of people don't realize you want to treat the hard floors just as much as the carpeted floors and by hard floors i mean tile wood uh you know linoleum all of it needs to be treated not just the carpeted areas and so you want to make sure you get a chemical that's labeled for that not all chemicals are labeled for total application and so the reason I don't, I, I, as far as, you know, the um, the actual method, you just want to make sure you're using something that's safe to use in the whole floor. And that's, I don't really tell a whole lot of chemicals. That crossfire is one, and I don't mind saying it because it's, you're not going to hurt yourself spraying it. But, you know, you can't just tell people, oh yeah, go out and buy this chemical. And then they go out and they use it, they make themselves sick, and then they blame me because they didn't apply it right. Uh, so I, I always tell people to, you know, obey the label, but it's, it's not, I don't ever have a problem getting rid of fleas the first time. The only time I ever have a problem getting rid of fleas is when the customer doesn't follow the directions. It's a, it's a two-way street with fleas, bed bugs too, but fleas, it, it, you really have to go in and, and vacuum the floors regularly. You have to move the department. I had a guy one time, he was a landlord and he had, uh, he had fleas all over the house but the house had been empty for three years no one had been in the house for three years and he came in to renovate it because the people that were in it before had dobermans and they tore the house up they weren't supposed to have dogs and they tore the house up he said he was a little disparaged he didn't want to rent it and then it took him three years he went in and the fleas hatched out of those cocoons and they just ate him up he said he had over 200 bites all over himself because he just went in and they just got all over him 
Um, I went in there and I, and I treated the whole apartment. It was completely empty. No furniture, nothing. Easy job. He waited three months to go back in the house. And because he didn't go back in the house, the fleas hatched all out again and they jumped all over him. Because it was three months later, that's easily after 21 days, and he really should have been in there moving around, hatching out those cocoons. What do you think about videos that tell you to boil like four or six eggs and put the yolks in a bowl, add boric acid or something that contains boric acid to keep adding sugar and mixing? Are you talking about roaches? Because I've heard that about roaches. That's funny. Um, boric acid kills cockroaches. They have to eat it to die. If you get a bellows duster, you know what? Let me pull up a picture. This is the perfect opportunity to show you. Let me. Oh, Internet Explorer. I hate that. Why is that up there? All right. Let me show you. Yeah, like a Play-Doh. But let me show you this. Bellows Duster. If I can get this image to load up on my... Oh, yeah, that's perfect. It's going to take me a minute. Sorry. i got to get this thing up on here. Let's put it in this folder right here. Let me change this image. Properties. Perfect. All right. And then I'll hide this one. There you go. That is a Bella's Duster. That's from Do My Own Pest Control. You can order those from Walmart. You get them on Walmart, like $13. They're cheap. You could put boric acid dust in one of those. And you can treat inside, like, you want to be careful because you don't want to get boric. Good luck poisoning yourself with boric acid. People wash their eyes out with boric acid. But you can put it in, you turn it upside down. So let's see, you want to turn that. Now that's right side up right there, that image, because you can fill it. You, you fill it up about half full, you turn it upside down, and you shake it real good. So it makes like a cloud inside the duster. And you can put the boric acid in around like your uh, compressor motors, around your refrigerator, and... What you want when you dust for cockroaches is the dust needs to be so fine, like the dust that forms on your uh, on your television screen. You don't want to look. You don't want to be able to see it at all. And the roaches will crawl through it, and they'll pick it up on their feet. And roaches clean themselves like cats. So when they go over into a corner somewhere, and they'll do like they'll they'll take their little hands and they'll put them in. Well, they don't have hands. Their feet. And they put them in their mouth and they'll lick that boric acid off and they'll eat it and it will kill them. Now, when you're talking about mixing sugar and egg yolks and stuff like that into like a Play-Doh type, you know, with boric acid, you're really trying to trick the roaches into eating the boric acid because eating it is how it kills them. If you can lay a fine powder down, you know, most of the time people will have it all clumped up and it looks like powdered sugar around their baseboards and stuff. And that's not going to work. That's not going to kill roaches. You want to put it out real fine, like what's on your television screen. And that will kill roaches because you're tricking them into walking through it. And then they walk through it and they're going to die from the boric acid. Boric acid is really slow though. It's, it's not going to kill them very quickly. It's going to take a while, and they might even be able to lay eggs before they die. They will eventually die from it, but if you're not breaking their life cycle, you're not really fixing the problem. So I use boric acid in addition to pesticide or something else. You know, It's good to have as many tools as you can when it comes to dealing with cockroaches because they do develop immunities, and that helps doing it that way.
But uh, that's what I use to kill yellow jackets too. That right there. That's the best tool for yellow jackets. I'll tell you the best thing about a bellows duster and yellow jackets when they're going in the ground because people don't want to get near them. And you go right up to them and you stick your hand that close to a nest of yellow jackets and you fill their nest full of dust and you kill them. That's impressive to people. They like that. And you don't get stung, you know. You get stung, it looks bad, but you don't get stung. It's like a crocodile hunter going out and playing with a snake and not getting bit, you know. <laughs> so, oh, man, this chair is not very comfortable. Yeah, you can use them with diatomaceous earth, too. And it's it's the same general premise with diatomaceous earth. The bugs aren't going to want to crawl through it because that's kind of like crawling through broken glass. And so uh, you're going to want to make it look like it isn't there. Uh, I give the example. My son dropped a glass in the kitchen one time and it broke and the glass went all over the floor. And you take and you sweep it up and you get all the big pieces up and you try your best to get it all up. But you know, in a day or two, you're going to walk across the kitchen floor and you're going to step on a really little teeny tiny piece of glass that you didn't see. And you're going to have to pull that thing out of your foot like a splinter. And, you know, that's that's how diatomaceous earth works. You want to put it down so fine that the bugs don't see it. And when they crawl through it, it cuts through their exoskeleton. Now, the way diatomaceous earth works is the same way that Semexa works. It works and dry, it dries out the bug. And it will, because it ha causes abrasions to their body, they'll dehydrate through, this, through their exoskeleton. And so that's how diatomaceous earth works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that wasp freeze. The problem with wasp freeze is it really only works really effectively if the nest is exposed. When you've got them going up into the wall, like where the siding meets the top of the foundation wall, uh, you know, if you use a liquid, if you use a dust, you won't have to come back. Um, I'll tell you, good dust is alpine. Alpine dust is really good for yellow jackets, but it's a neonicotinoid. You got to be real careful with neonics because, you know, they're, they're real strict, real, real, real strict. You got to be real careful how you apply it. But, um, it's, yeah, it's really effective. It's really, really effective, and you don't have to. You don't have callbacks because uh, with yellow jackets, because they sleep at night, they all go into the nest, and they're all dead by tomorrow. Now you might have a problem with like European hornets or bald-faced hornets because they fly more often, but um, with yellow jackets, yeah, they die pretty quick. Now I don't know. Y'all might have some different things down in Texas. I know you got more bugs. They're, they're more like scorpions and stuff like that but we don't really have scorpions here. I, I had to learn about them when I got my license back, shoot, 18 years ago. I got my license when I was 17 that I had to because that's when I took over my own uh, pest control route when I was 17. So I had to have a license to do that. But uh, yeah, other than that, I worked under my dad for, you know, from the time I was seven, six, seven years old. So yeah, alpine dust, really good stuff. You can use it for roaches and stuff too, behind baseboards and things like that. But it's alpine. So if you're using like alpine WSG or something like that, you don't need to use the dust too, you know, because it's the same chemical. Um, you're better off using something like boric acid or diatomaceous or something like that with roaches if you're dealing with roaches. But yeah, man, I got to get my chat fixed so I don't have to read. I've, I've, I'm sitting here and I'm staring at the chat. And anybody that watches this later after it's pre-recorded are going to think there's something wrong with me. But I'm just reading what people are saying. When the questions pop up, I, I read the question. But, you know, we're kind of just sitting here chatting, chit-chatting. <laughs> I have a friend who mistook a char of diatomaceous earth for flour. Oh, wow. I bet that made some nasty biscuits. He said he... <laughs> <laughs> he was making biscuits and gravy at his girlfriend's house. She'd been keeping it on top of the fridge. People eat diatomaceous earth, but you're not supposed to have a whole lot of it. You just need a very little bit. It's supposed to help you with like bioorganisms and stuff from what I understand from what I've read. I've, I used to take a little here and there, but I don't know. I, I hadn't, I hadn't taken it in a long time. Wow. Well, well, did the biscuits rise? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
I, I'd like to I'd like to know how them biscuits tasted. <laughs> oh man, poor guy. That ain't gonna make gravy though. I don't think that would make gravy at all. I feel sorry for people that don't know what biscuits and gravy are though. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna get on off of here, y'all. It's uh I said almost an hour ago that I was gonna go in fifteen minutes, so I think I'm gonna call it a night. I hope this video has been uh helpful for people. Why <laughs> Oh, that's a story. That's great. That's great. You know, I did have a guy tell me one time that he took uh for rats. He he's from um where is he from? I think he's from Libya. And he said when he was in Libya, when he used to live in Libya, they would take uh concrete powder and mix it with butter and they would make little bitty balls out of concrete powder and butter and they would feed them to rats and it would kill rats that way and he's that's what they did in in uh in libya when he was you know when he would kill rats that's how he killed rats that's got to be an awful painful way to kill rats you know because we were talking earlier i think it was eco i was talking about killing rats with um on my video just a little bit ago i was commenting on the rats or mice but that was pretty uh that's a pretty gruesome way to kill the mice but i guess it worked because he was talking about how well it worked so but anyway you guys have a great night i'm going to get on off of here if uh like i said if the video has been helpful subscribe and like my stuff and share it around if you if you really liked it i know this is more of like a uh kind of like a live show it's not really going to be as helpful hopefully it is helpful to you know everybody y'all have a great evening and uh, i'm gonna get on off of here yeah i'll do some more live chats if i can get the time I, my daughter's in bed everybody's asleep so i can i can get on here and i can talk but you know i got a four-year-old and she's like all the time so <laughs> i can't just sit here with my daughter and talk about bugs she'll talk about them too but you guys have a great evening